It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, you can, I'm the president of uh, Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting. Uh, you can find a link to my work at emailrevealer.com. You can also go there and get an autographed copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator. Uh, but if you need an adoption investigation or, or locate or online infidelity investigation, any kind of digital forensics, recover deleted text messages, then you go to emailrevealer.com and get a hold of me there. Now, this show is brought to you by CartKing.com. Get a hold of them at 1-877-986-7771. Have you ever thought about opening your own uh, mobile cart or kiosk business? Uh, perhaps your current business wants to add multiple point-of-sale locations across the country quickly. Like if you have a product or something you want to sell or a business you want to promote, you could be in 25 malls across the country in a matter of weeks. Maybe the facility you manage kickstart revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Own a large office building, a factory, a high traffic area, a hospital, and you can put a coffee kiosk there in the lobby and make a fortune. CarKing.com can be the answer to your needs. CarKing.com is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile retail coffee carts and food carts that money can buy. For 20 years, CarKing.com has been working with clients and corporations across America to provide indoor and outdoor carts and kiosks for any application from large, heated, secure outdoor retail or food kiosks, like the ones you see by the baseball little league field there, they're selling hot dogs and stuff like that, to smaller, more mobile coffee kiosks and coffee stations, CartKing.com designs and builds them all. You go to their website, CartKing.com, you, you get some ideas, they'll help you design it, they'll build it, they ship it worldwide. Check them out at www.cart-king.com. Give him a call at 877-986-7771. Tell him Ed Opperman sent you and you get a good deal. Okay, we just had a, a conversation the other day with uh, Nathan Forrest Winters, uh, who was the young man. He was in the movie Clown House. Uh, you can check out his website, NathanForrestWinters.com. Uh, he just came out with a film called The Babysitter. Now, we have with us today the, the filmmaker behind, the director behind uh, uh, The Babysitter, uh, Connor Frazier. Connor, are you there? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. great. Connor, tell us about yourself. Who is Connor Frazier? Um, Connor Frazier, I guess. Um, Connor Frazier is creative. <laughs> I've wanted to make films since I was four years old, and it's just something that kind of it, it, it never left me. So this is my first thing. I mean, I, I've worked on other, you know, smaller projects, but this is the first thing that I've actually done on my own, you know, taking the reins on. So um, I guess I like monster movies and cartoons, and I like directing. <laughs> and, and you're still a young man, so you, this, you, this is like a – hopefully this is going to be your career, right? Yes, yes, I'm 21. Yeah, the 21. God bless you, man. Let me tell you, enjoy every day. Hey, I'm 55 years old. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, you get to the end of your life. You, you, so, many, you, so many things you wish you had done. 55 years old and just, uh, uh, you, I'm starting, you know, I'm looking at my mortality. You know, 21 years old, you got the whole world ahead of you, man. God bless you. Thank you. Now, what is it that, that got you attracted to this story? Because like I said, you know, you're a young guy. You know, what would bring you to, to such a, a horrific story? Tale is a Nathan Forrest Winters a molested from the age of six years old to eleven years old by this creep, uh, uh, Salva Victor Salva. Uh, what brought you to this? Well, I mean, like I said, I like monster movies. Mm. So when you know when I was little, it was one of the Jeepers Creepers is one of those films that you could watch, you know, at ten years old, and it wasn't a problem. You know, it was something. You know, it was cartoonish enough that you could get away with it at a young age and your parents wouldn't complain. So, you know, it's something that a lot of people, you know, when I was growing up, 
you know, it was the early 2000s when I was really little and it was something that everybody knew about, you know, Freddie Jason and the Creeper, you know, and so I, I'd known about the series and I had looked the guy up and, you know, I'd seen, well, I mean, like 11 years old, you know, I'd looked him up and said, oh, he was a you know convicted child molester, Nathan Forrest Winters, mm. and nobody really knows what happened to Nathan Winters. <laughs> so, you know, move forward a couple of years and here we are, you know, and I'm kind of just getting done working on another project with a friend of mine who's a filmmaker locally with me here in Roanoke. And I said, you know, I really want to direct my own thing. You know, I think I'm ready to do that. And so I looked him back up again, just out of curiosity, you know, because you see it a lot, you know, especially if you follow horror movies, you know, it comes up a lot. Victor Salvo, Victor Salvo, should we forgive Victor Salvo? You know, what have you. And you never really saw much about Nathan. It was always, when nobody really knows, you know, maybe he was bought out, you know, it, it was almost like there was this mystery, you know, there's like this air of mystery surrounding him. And so that made me really curious because I'm like, okay, this guy is essentially just gone off the radar. I, I want to track him down. <laughs> yeah. So I found him on Facebook and I messaged him and I said, Hey, you know, I was like, are, are you the real Nathan Forrest winners? And he was like, no, I said, are you the real Nathan winners? And he said, Nathan Forrest winners to be exact. <laughs> he was kind of trolling me a little bit at the beginning because he didn't know what my motives were. And once he knew that I was legit, he was much more open. And we talked for a while. You know, we would spend hours on the telephone talking. And I said, you know, I really want to do a movie. I don't really know what I want to do. I just know that I want to do it. So that's how it started. Yeah, interesting. I, I kind of found him the same way on Facebook. Um, I had a guest on the show, Mike Parziali, who was uh, mm -hmm. an expert on these child abuse cases in Hollywood. I have him on all the time now. Um, and, and he told me this story about Nathan with uh, Francis Ford Coppola and stuff like that. And then I contacted him on Facebook. I said, you want to do a show? And he came around on the show. In two hours, been fascinating interview. Uh, an amazing story. Now, but you, you've spent, yeah, yeah it's incredible. Now, and, and really untold. It, it's an untold story. Yeah. People have no idea that Coppola's involvement or that this kid was sued. First, he was molested, then sued yeah. by the movie company. Now, but you've spent a lot of time with Nathan. So why don't you tell us the story of what happened to Nathan uh, as you know it? Um, starting at the age of six, um, Victor, I'm not Victor, Nathan's mother had a friend whose child was at a daycare center and she had told Rebecca and Nathan's mom that there was this guy named Victor who worked there with the kids and he was like an amateur filmmaker and he was working on this project called Goblin's Gold. It was like a short film. And he was having a hard time finding somebody to make the dummy, like the, the dummy head for the goblin. Like he, he, he couldn't find somebody that could do the prop. And she said, well, Rebecca, you know, she dabbles in crafts and all that. And so Rebecca did the goblin for him and that's how they got in touch. It's kind of, you know, he would, I guess, come over, you know, and Nathan was there and he started to kind of, move towards Nathan and try to, I guess, gain his confidence. And they became friendly. It's, it, it was the whole thing of like, okay, well, you're, you're busy. You know, you've got a lot in your hands. You've got two kids, you know, uh, let me take Nathan for the night. You know, mm -hmm. I'll take him to see a movie. We'll go to the park or, you know, and it progressed to let's have him over to my house for the weekend. And you know, it was the it was the eighties. It was the early eighties. You know, nobody was worried about it back then. You know, it's kind of sad because nowadays everybody's really paranoid about it. Um, but back then, nobody was. There was like an innocence. It was still pretty fresh. The idea of you know child abductions and sexual abuse it was fresh in people's minds. This was still kind of Mayberry, um, even in California. So. It started at six and it just kind of progressed from there. And I think he said it was about a year in where Nathan, uh, Victor first abused him. It started with 
him. They were watching a film. They were watching The Jungle Book, the 1960s cartoon, and Nathan was like dancing to one of the songs. And Vicar said, "You want me to make you a loincloth, like the main character." And he stripped Nathan naked and took two bandanas and tied them together and wrapped them around his waist. And we actually um, did that. We kind of, I guess, I don't know, we dramatized that in the movie a little bit. <laughs> not really, you know, not with a kid or anything, but we took that and um, Nathan actually did, you know, he took bandanas and tied them around a, the waist of a, of a dummy that we had. Mm to kind of represent, okay, this is what he did. Um, and then it progressed to things like, you know, oral sex or, you know, he would film Nathan flipping through pornography, you know, trying to get him aroused and he would film him, um, giving him oral sex. Victor would film Nathan giving Victor oral sex. Um, and it just kind of, you know, went like that for a long time until clown house. And, you know, they filmed Clown House. Well, first off, they did something in the basement. That was a short film. Um, and it was about like a young boy whose brother is off at war, and he's, like, terrified of this monster in the basement. It's like a psychological horror film. I've, I've never seen it, you yeah. know, just taking from what Nathan told me. And so that was the first thing. And that was submitted to the Sony Video Festival or Film Festival. I don't remember. Um and Francis Coppola was one of the judges and he saw the film. He liked it. And he asked Victor, you know, do you have any scripts for like low budget horror films? Cause Francis Coppola was brought up in low budget. You know, he worked with Roger Corman and that was, you know, in the early days, that's how he got his start. He did dementia 13 low budget horror movie. So he asked Victor, you know, do you have any? And he said, I've got clown house. And he gave him, um, it, the numbers vary for how much money, but I mean, for the most part, people say it was a million dollars to do Clown House. And so they did that. And I think at that point, that's when people, you know, that, that was when it was really out in the open. You know, for the most part, it had been quiet and there weren't many people that knew, except really Victor and Nathan. And maybe, you know, you could speculate close friends, but close friends of Victor's. But Clown House was when, you know, you had people on set that were seeing that, you know, Nathan would jump on Victor's lap, you know, or kiss him on the cheek or you know, something like that. And they were kind of like quietly nudging the issue. A lot of people were, were silent about it, but some people were kind of quietly nudging the issue with Rebecca until Rebecca essentially sat Nathan down and made him talk. And... By the time production wrapped up, they had already pressed charges and Victor was arrested during post-production. That's kind of like the time span of it between the ages of six and 12. But you're saying that to, uh, Nathan, the, the people were witnessing obviously inappropriate behavior between these two and some of them were silent about it? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, most people were. I mean, this was a low budget film. You know, nobody wanted to lose their job. You know, it, a lot, for a lot of people, it was like their start. It was this low budget, you know, thing, but it was their start. You know, Francis Coppola had produced it. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a big deal. Um, you know, Nathan, Victor had gone from these little, you know, half hour, low low budget, you know, almost like Z grade horror films to doing something with an actual budget where they could actually do things and make a name for themselves. I can understand that. And that it's amazing, though, that no one anonymously called up Child Protective Services and made a report about this. I think it's, you know, the, the regular, it's the psychology in Hollywood. Is mm -hmm. Everybody is out to get something, and you could jeopardize that, you know, if you say something, especially when it's the director, you yeah. know, when, it, when it's one of the, you know, the big guys, you know, on set. It's not just a, you know, crew member, you know. This guy wrote it, and his, he's directing it, you know? Right. Now, now, was Salva also openly doing this, or was he trying to play it down and tell him, hey, Nathan, take it easy? Um, I think he was pretty open about it. I mean, it wasn't like they were very flamboyant about it, but it was just small things, like, you know, sitting on the director's lap or, you know, right. giving him a kiss on the cheek. Um, I, I don't know, you know, if some people, you know, maybe some people just didn't, didn't, 
see the correlation or or what? Because Victor's very 